Good afternoon and welcome to today's planning meeting, committee meeting. My name is Councillor David Connor and I'm Chairman of the Planning Committee here at Fenland. I'd now like to begin by welcoming members of the public and press in attendance and those who are watching on the live stream of this meeting via YouTube. Whilst this meeting is being held publicly, it is also being streamed via YouTube, meetings of the minutes produced in the usual way and, and a recording of the meeting will be available to view on YouTube until such times that the minutes are produced. Please be aware that only audio from the microphones will be captured on the live stream. Therefore, those invited to speak need to ensure their microphones are on when speaking and are as close to the microphone as possible. To enable the meeting to run in an orderly manner, can all present keep their microphones off except when invited to speak? Please ensure that the microphone is turned off when you have finished speaking. I would also like to ask everyone ensures that their mobile phones are on silent or turned off for the duration of the meeting. Please be aware that the cameras will be on at all times also during the meeting. With regard to the meeting, I must ask members of the public to refrain from interrupting. The only members of the public allowed to speak are those who are registered. Anyone who speaks must do so in a respectful and polite manner. It is right there is meaningful discussion about the merits of an application, but I will not allow inappropriate language or personal attacks on councillors and their beliefs, on members of the public or on officers' professional advice. So with that, we'll now go to agenda, get, put my teeth back in. Now we'll go, go to agenda item number one, and I'd like to ask member services if we have any apologies for absence. So over to you, Joe. thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Apologies received this afternoon from councillors Mrs Davis and councillor Topgood. Substituting today for councillor Topgood is councillor Miss Scanlon. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank you once again, um, councillor Miss Scanlon, thank you. Uh, agenda number item number two is to confirm and sign the minutes from the previous meeting, which is the 6th of April 2022. Um, do I have a proposer to approve the minutes? Councillor Purser? Second, Councillor Scolding. All those in favour of it, so. Thank you, those minutes have been accepted. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll go to agenda item number three, which is urgent items. Uh, there are none. Agenda item number four is declarations of interest. Member services will now to go to each councillor in turn, and could you please state if you have anything to declare in relation to any of the agenda items uh, today. Thank you. Over to you again, Joe, please. Councillor Benny. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Um, right, I usually attend Chatteris Town Council planning. I take no part in the discussion or debate um, of the one item that's on there. I didn't attend that meeting anyway, but just to clarity, just to uh, highlight that. Um, also, Morton Hall, there is an application on here today that is mine that has been done by Morton and Hall. Historically, they have done work for me before. Um, obviously, I do know Matthew Hall. And Matthew is also doing the work for Chatteris Town Council on the Growing Fenland Project, which I'm chair of. And he's doing the Church Lane and the Two Park Street application. So I do know this, uh, this gentleman, um, but that does not um, sway my, my opinions in any way. Uh, item five today, um, the Whittlesea Road application. Um, under my portfolio of economic growth, my economic growth officer, Simon Jackson, um, has been in contact with Force One. Um, and I've, I've told Simon I don't want anything to do with the application to keep myself sterile for this application. The only thing I know is that Simon is trying to get some funding for through the CPCA um, for the, the training for part of this application. But that is all, and I've kept myself out of that. I've never met the gentleman. I wouldn't know who he is, but that's just for clarity. Um, item six on the South Fens. This again falls under my portfolio. Um, I have um, had dealings with this in the preparation for this planning application to come forward. And that one I will stand away from today. I will stay in the room, but I will not vote. and I will not speak on that application. Um, item seven is the only one today that I've got no connection with whatsoever. And that one I will, will deal with. And item eight. Uh, this application, whilst it's not in my name, um, it's a property that I own the freehold from, or freehold for, and it's the uh, tenant that has put the application in, and I will be speaking on this today, so I will leave the room when the application goes before you. Um, I've registered to speak, 
and I will speak and I've discussed this with the solicitor and I've gone through uh, with uh, Stephen today on all these applications, my involvement in this. Um, so I've stated my uh, position on all these applications today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Betty. Thank you. Councillor Connor. No, I'm just got. I'm just a member of March Town Council, but I take no part in planning. Thank you, Councillor Cornwall. Mm -hmm. Yes, Chairman, item five, um, that's the Land non commercial Middle Level Commissioners. Um, I am employed by the neighbouring um, organisation or company, uh, which is actually mentioned within the paperwork. So I choose not to take part in any of that. There's no any interest or anything. So I would just observe if that's okay. Most certainly is. Councillor Mrs. French. Uh, thank you. Yes, I'm a member of Marchtown Council, but take no part. I'm also a member of March West and White Fen Internal Drainage Board, uh, which agenda item five, um, but I, I've got no conflict of interest. So. Uh, Chairman, yes, may I also add that I'm a council representative on West Fen as well. So again, I'm not taking part in that. Councillor Marks. Thank you. On item five, I've taken legal advice. Uh, the company is known to me as I'm a director of a business they use. However, I have no day-to-day -day dealings with the business or know any of the directors. Um, so therefore remain open-minded. And on item eight, obviously I know councillor Benny um, from the council, but again, remain open-minded. Councillor Mrs. Mayor. Yes, thank you. I'm a member of Whittlesey Town Council. I sit on the planning committee. Agenda item number seven. I was present while this item was discussed. Um, so I'm not going to take any part in the um, discussion on it. Thank you. Councillor Murphy. Yes, I attend Chapman's Town Council. It's take no part in any of the planning applications. Um, I, obviously, I do know Councillor Benny, but uh, that uh, nothing to do with the uh, old uh, things. To, what he's up for and also i know uh, matthew hall as well because he's doing the chapters museum that i'm part of from the chapters town council councillor purser yes i'm a member of march town council but i take no part whatsoever in any of the planning applications i am um on the march east internal drainage board and i do know councillor benny but i should be totally open-minded with um, my thoughts on these councillor scolding Good afternoon. <coughs> I am a member of March Town Council. I do not take any part in the planning on March Town Council. And I also know Councillor Benny, but that won't sway me in my decision. Thank you. Councillor Sutton. Thank you, Joe, Chairman. <coughs> yeah, I've just got uh, one really. Uh, this, 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 this of no sort of financial interest to me, but just to, to uh, be transparent, I am on the middle level commissioners board and I am a commissioner. Um, and, I, I, and I haven't got a clue who Councillor Benny is. <laughs> oh, that's him, is it? <laughs> of course, I know Councillor Benny through the council. And uh, again, you know, that, that won't have any uh, impact on the way I vote or the way I think. Thanks. Councillor Miscanron. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Chairman. Um, agenda item. Uh, first of all, I'm a member of Whittlesey Town Council. I'm chairman of the planning committee there. Um, agenda item five. I am also on middle level commissioners, uh, but it doesn't affect my decision um, going into this open minded. And agenda item seven. I chair, obviously chaired the meeting where this took place. I will take no part in the discussion or vote on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank you, members. Now we'll go to the main part of the meeting, the planning applications. Just to remind members, a proposal to grant or refuse an application should only be done, be made when, when invited to do so. And if going against officer recommendation, the proposal should be accompanied by the planning reasons for doing so. So without further ado, I'll now hand over to Alison Hoffman. She's the Senior Development Officer here at Fenland to present 
application F stroke YR21 stroke O887F agenda item number five. So Alison, when you're ready, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. This application is for the erection of an office workshop, a vehicle workshop and a training centre, along with 2.4 metre high fence and formation of car park and associated infrastructure on land northwest of middle level commissioners, Whittlesea Road, March, Cambridgeshire. The applicant is Mr P Burke of Force One Limited and the agent is Mr Papworth of Morton Hall Consulting Limited. The application is before committee as the town council comments a number of representations received are contrary to officer recommendation. There are no updates to report. The above slide illustrates the application site edged red with the headquarters of the middle level commissioners situated to the west. It is noted that the middle level commissioners site was granted outline planning permission in 2005 as a departure to the local plan in force at this time. The justification for this departure was that the middle level commissioners required a river frontage site to enable their efficient operation and sufficient space to accommodate their workshops, offices and equipment. It is noted that that permission was personal to the organisation. The next slide shows again the site plan as produced by the agent. The following slide shows the proposed site in more detail. It shows the site layout with the main office building located to the front of the site with a one-way circular route around the building to enable access to the training centre to the east of the offices and the vehicle shed to the southwest of the site. The next slide shows the site access in detail. And as indicated in the officer report, there is some conflict in terms of the access position and an established horse track chestnut tree to the site frontage. The agent and his specialist tree advisor contend that the access may be delivered without harm to the tree, provided that precautionary steps are taken. In addition, it is asserted that the access could be relocated marginally to take it outside of the root protection area and that such a proposal is likely to receive the favourable consideration of the local highway authority. The slide on display now shows the training centre and that is the building that's proposed to be located to the eastern side of the site. This slide shows the office workshop building and this building is proposed to be situated to the front of the site in an almost central position. The final building proposed on the site is the vehicle shed, which would occupy the southwestern corner of the site as shown. This slide shows the horse chestnut tree referenced in the officer report as both the street scene and aerial view image. The arrow shows the position. These photographs show the site in context as do the images now on display. The scheme proposes unjustified development in an unsustainable location, which will adversely impact on the character and appearance of the rural setting. The location is considered unsustainable in that it lies outside the main settlement of March on a road without any public footpaths or lighting, placing reliance on private motor vehicles. Furthermore, the site is within a flood zone three location and it has not been demonstrated that there are no other sites which could deliver the development within an area of lower flood risk. There also remains the issue of the route protection zone and technical access detail. However, it is accepted that there may be scope to address this matter through the submission of scheme revisions additional detail. Nevertheless, the location of the site and its flood zone three status render the scheme proposal unacceptable when assessed against local and national planning policy. For these reasons, the application is recommended for refusal for the condition with the reasons as listed in the officer report. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Alison. We have one speaker on this application. I'd now like to invite Matthew Hall. Of course, he's the agent to make his presentation to the committee. You have five minutes uh, to make your presentation. Start when you're ready, uh, Mr. Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Force One has been operating in March for over 17 years. 
At present, it is located at Thorby Avenue, where offices are located in a built up area. The present restricted depot is located at Long Hill Road, which it has outgrown. At present, 60 persons are employed by the company. A bit over two years ago, when we started looking at this project, it was 44 people. The company works nationwide and is all based in March. The company provides safe working suction vehicles for most major infrastructure projects, such as HS2, Sizewell C, network rail, nuclear industry, airports, and petrochemicals. Local work is also undertaken for residential, commercial, and industrial projects. The company have advised me that they plan to employ a further 40 people by December 2023, and that they have placed orders for six million pounds worth of plant investment delivery by December 2023. This is an expanding company located in March and wishes to stay in March. The report makes reference to the location of this proposal as being rural location. Could we have the Ordnance Survey plan on the screen, please? So you can see on the Ordnance Survey, obviously the site is outlined in red. Immediately to the west is the middle level commissioner's offices in flood zone three. Adjacent to the site is Fen Coaches. On the opposite side of the site, there is a builder's merchant builder's yard. There's Fox's Marina. There are further businesses down there, down Marina Drive and Wilson Road. Mr. Hall, Local can I just interrupt you? I'm ever so sorry, we've got a bit of a technical problem. So if we just pause for a moment and we'll get this sorted out. All right. Sorry, member.
okay, you, you, you're happy to carry on from there or? Uh, entirely up to you if I'll start again. Yeah. I'll start from here, it's up to you. What, from the first slide, I think probably be easy for openness and transparency for the YouTube, people who are viewing on YouTube. So, start again then. yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Force One has been operating in March for over 17 years. At present, it is located at Thorpe Avenue, where offices are located in a built up area. The present restricted depot is located at Long Hill Road, which is outgrown. At present, the company employs 60 people. But over two years ago, when we started looking at this project, it was 44 people. The company works nationwide and is all based in March. The company provides safe, su safe working suction vehicles for most major infrastructure projects, such as HS2, Sizewell C, Network Rail, the nuclear industry, airports, and petrochemicals. Local work is also carried out on residential, commercial, and industrial level projects. The company has advised me that they plan to employ a further 40 people by December 2023, and that they have placed an order for £6 million worth of plant investment for delivery by 2023. This is an expanding company located in March that wants to stay in March. The report makes reference to the location of this proposal being in a rural location. So as you can see on the Ordnance Survey plan, the site's obviously outlined in red. To the west of this site is the middle level commissioner's offices in the flood zone three. To the east is Fen Coaches. To the north is a builder's depot. And there are further businesses, Fox's Marina, and further businesses down Whittlesey Road and Marina Drive. When you go further west towards Turves, there's a large company, Ken Thomas, located further beyond this site. We have provided a detailed arboriculture report due to the existing tree on the site and the access works. This report, done by an independent consultant, <coughs> confirms mitigation measures to protect the tree and advises that the access can be set. There have been various discussions with Cambridgeshire County Council Highways Department regarding the access to this site. A highways consultant has provided a detailed speed survey and detailed design which has been approved by Cambridgeshire County Council. At present, the company has 16 suction vehicles, three light goods vehicles, 20 light commercial vehicles, as well as company cars. The suction vehicles are currently parked when not on site at Long Hill Road, which it's outgrown. For members that live in March, like myself, they'll have seen these vehicles coming off the roundabout at Pease Hill, going along Wisbeach Road, down Dartford Road, Station Road, up Elm Road to get to the depot at Long Hill Road. The other route is via the 20 foot bank. This proposal will allow vehicles to exit the bypass onto a short, short stretch of Whittlesey Road to enter the site, removing vehicles and coming into March and putting them on the bypass on the edge of March. The site has been developed, as Alison has said, with a one-way system with adequate parking. A detailed drainage design has been produced by an independent consultant, which has been approved by the Lead Local Flood Authority and the Environment Agency. One of the key points here is where members have visited site, they'll have seen at the front of the site, there is a hedge, which is set back from the brink of the ditch at the front. We're not proposing to move that hedge just set an access through it so the strip between the brink of the ditch and that hedge is to be maintained. Um, could we have the 3D images we submitted, please? Uh, we've produced various, various images of the proposal, showing the office building. In the corner of the building to the northeast corner, as Alison said, there is a training center, which will be used by the company and other organizations to provide in-house training. We consider that this site is set between and opposite existing businesses and is ideal for this type of large development. The company is continuing to expand and wishes to stay in March. Its offices and small depot are located at separate sites, 
And this proposal will allow both to be set at one larger location with room for expansion. Within the local plan, March is listed as one of the main market towns. All the consultees support this application. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hall, for that. Members, questions or clarifications for Mr. Hall? Okay. Um, Mr. Hall, Middle Label, it was quite a lengthy report with regard to Middle Label. Um, can, can you tell me the last time you contacted them? When we, thank you, when we submit this application, we use the existing access where middle level enter their site because we've got a right of way that was checked on land registry when um, Patrick brought this field off the farm who sadly passed away. That was opposed by Cambridgeshire County Council and the middle level. We then moved it to this location. The location of this was agreed with the highways. With the middle level, that was their first objection. Their second objection, which was in mid-December, we have tried to engage mid-December to the start to mid-February with various phone calls and emails to discuss their objections. And that time we didn't have any response. We did have an email back the middle of February saying that we must engage through a post application process for the consent to go over the actual drainage ditch to culvert it and any consent to discharge, which I don't believe we'll need, and to discuss about the maintenance strips. Have we had any meeting or phone call back? No. That's mid February yet. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That that does answer the question because there is a, a meeting next week with the middle level commissioners and it does actually say it's disappointing that you haven't had further discussions. Um so hopefully you will have further discussions if approved. Thank you for that, Councillor French. Anybody else got any questions for Mr. Hall? Can't see any. No, thank you very much for that then. Just let Mr. Hall get seated and then we'll... Uh... Members, questions, clarifications to officers? Can't see any. Oh, can't. Oh, didn't you? It's uh, members' clarifications to officers. Councillor Benny first, and uh, then obviously Councillor French second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, question to officers. Mr. Hall just said that, um, well, from what he was answering Councillor French's uh, question, it seems like middle level have not really been very forthcoming um, in responding to Mr. Hall. Um, if this application uh, is determined today. Are these um, issues with middle level? Can they be sorted out by officers after the, if we make a decision today on this? Within the officer report, um, it does summarise the comments of middle level commissioners and they indicate that their prior written consent will be required under section 23 of the Land Drainage Act for the formation of the access culvert. Um, and then also they do urge um, that the applicant discusses it with the commissioner's board via a post application consultation. So um, it obviously is a separate um, consenting process to the planning consent. Um, I don't know if Nick would like to add anything. Uh, for you, Chairman, no, um, the, the, any planning decision that we, we make or issue can't override the requirements of other legislation. So a uh, discharging into the IDB system requires a separate consent mm. of the IDB and equally consent um, with regard to uh, crossing the existing uh, drainage ditch and culverting it requires a separate consent. We don't have any direct control over that, unfortunately. No, my, my, my question was more, um, if we get a determination on this today, these are the kind of things that will be sorted out afterwards and the, the development will not go ahead if these issues are not resolved, but it, it can't go ahead anyway. So that's... Uh, so really, that's just paperwork to be sorted out afterwards, after this decision is, if we reach a decision today. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, that's my, that's my understanding, Councillor Benny. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for clarity on that. Councillor French. Uh, thank you. I have asked this question before, why it takes so long uh, for applications uh, from the time they're validated to the time they either come to commission. 
committee or um, have a decision on them. I mean, this is nearly a year since this application. It was, uh, I looked on site this morning and it was uh, submitted in June last year, validated a month later, July. Uh, my concern, and it was always my concern, um, looking after the offices of the planning um, department, what is the problem? Is it the fact that you don't have the funding the resources? I have said before, if that is the case, especially with validations, um, speak to your portfolio holder and get some more money in there. Uh, through you, Chairman, um, I, I don't think it's the time and the place to discuss the resources of, of the planning service. Uh, we're here to um, make decisions on, on planning applications. I'm more than happy to pick up um, mm. conversations subsequent to the meeting with, with any member that um, wishes to, to come and speak with. Yeah, it, it, yeah come back. Um, I understand that, Nick, but I have asked the question before. Um, you know, maybe outside you can actually speak to the portfolio holder. You know, it's to help the planning department right across everything. Yeah, thank you, Councillor French. Um, have you got any more questions or clarifications at all, Councillor French, or is that... Uh, okay, now I've just got one then. Um, I see in 5.5, um, advice to the applicant, um, it says only clean contaminated surface water, and I'll go, I won't I need to go on from there, but surely we could have an interceptor, um, a stage one, two, three, or whatever interceptors they are now um, to do that work. Alison, couldn't we? Um, as part of the um, recommendation of the local lead flood authority, they are anticipating um, further details with regard to the detailed um, drainage strategy for the site. And I'm sure that element would pick up on that as well. There is also an informative that they include with their consultation response, require, uh, highlighting the need for pollution control. So that would be a given as part of the surface water detailed design. Thank you. Yes, that would cover that nicely, wouldn't it? Thank you. So questions, any questions to officers at all? No? Right, thank you very much for that. So now, thank you everybody. Now I'd like to invite members to debate the item in respect of the material planning considerations relevant to the application. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. So we're in debate, guys. Thank you. Councillor French, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Yes, I, th I think, you know, there's, it's quite a bit of reading on, on this and to take everything in. Um, what, what, one of the, the concerns um, that it's in a, a rural and it's not in the, the right location. Um, I don't know where else you would want to put um, a business like this. It certainly can't be in the middle of town. I have been a, a, the, the chairman of the MATS, Mark, Mark Shear Transport Study, uh, for over four years. And we've been looking across the whole of March how we can um, reduce the traffic in town, how we can uh, get rid of the pollution in town, uh, which is a, a great concern to people, especially the people who work in town. If this application was approved, it takes uh, the traffic away from the town, from Pierce Hill down, about, down to Elm Road. Uh, Long Hill is not a very large um, uh, site, so I understand why <clears throat> um, the business wants to uh, relocate to a, a better premises. And obviously they have their offices in Thorby. So by getting rid of the Thorby and the Long Hill, um, it, it just makes common sense. Uh, I wasn't aware of uh, the amount of um, personnel that were employed, 60, I mean, that, that's a lot of people, and an increase of another 40 over the next few years. With regard, there's, there's lots of mentions in this report about mats and uh, an application that was refused 10 years ago. Um, Pierce Hill Roundabout has been in heavy discussions with MATS for the last four years. In actual fact, at um, County Council Highway and Transport meeting last week, it was agreed that um, County Council could apply to the combined authority for just over 3.7 million to progress with the work that's being done at Pierce Hill Roundabout. There is going to be a new roundabout there. Uh, it's going to be a very large roundabout. Uh, so I've got no concerns whatsoever um, about it not being able to cope. And the other thing that was released a few weeks ago, we will be having traffic lights at Hostmore uh, because Hostmore is the problem, no left turn. 
then they have to go around the roundabout again uh, if they want to, to go north. So I think this is the ideal site. There are various um, commercial properties down there. I mean, Ken Thomas is probably another quarter of a mile down there. MBM used to be in that site. So I don't have a problem with that, this application, and I certainly would be looking um, to have it approved. Yeah, thank you, Councillor French. Councillor Murphy. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm sorry that she came in before me, actually, because it said about very everything I was going to I was going to say on here. But I was I was going to start off uh, with, I, mean, I think you'll appreciate this one. But I know I'm a simple person. But, but that's what I said. But I, I, with no more room to expand in in, in town centre, uh, I, I just cannot understand why uh, business all around the area where he wants to go can get permission. Yet he goes there and can't get permission. And I I, I just cannot understand what the difference is with this application to all the other applications that came in. I mean, I think this is an ideal site, as Jan said, and I, I think we need to approve this. Councillor Benny and Councillor Miscannon, or Councillor Miscannon first, if you'd like to. Thank you very much, Chairman. I think this is an ideal location for this size of business and this type of business. It takes it away from the town. Um, we all know that the commercial vehicles going through the town are a big pain to all the local residents. And I think this is an absolute ideal location for this business to go to. Uh, it's not in the open countryside. Uh, it's got uh, businesses either side of it. Uh, yes, it is rural, but then a lot of businesses of this type move into rural areas because they don't like being choked up in towns. And I think this is an ideal location for it. Very pertinent answers. Uh, Councillor Scolding, then I'll take Councillor Benny next. Thank you. Okay, I was just looking at the design, and I think what a fantastic design and what a fantastic place it would be. Um, I know the land very well because. At the age of 14, I actually ploughed that land and <laughs> they could never, ever get a crop off it. So it's not a big good sense. No, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> probably got a help. <laughs> no, that's in fact today. So. But no, it looks fantastic. And I'd like to think this goes through, get more jobs in the area. It's, it's all good. Thank you. It wasn't with my tractor. That ran really nicely, Rob, was it, when we were down there together? Thank you. Um, I think it was, actually. You sold it because you said it ran like a dream. It did. It actually did. Councillor Benny. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I mean, I've, I've read this report from cover to cover several times to look at it. And, you know, I, I look at the reasons for refusal, LP3. Well, this has got businesses on all four sides of it. It's got Fen Coaches, it's got Fox and Marina, it's got Middle Level, it's got Rutherford's Yard on the north side. Um, and I can't disagree with anything any of the councillors have said here today. This, this is the, the ideal place for these businesses. And um, I mean, we, the economic growth team, we work with businesses throughout Benland to try and bring these forward. And there's a shortage of land. There's a shortage of um, available spaces. And I think this has found a very available space um, that will make very good use of, of, of this land. I mean, a, a business. Um, you need a big seat to put them on. And it makes so, total sense to me to consolidate down, makes the business more profitable for the owner, which means it's more sustainable. Um, I, I really feel that, you know, this is, is good. Um, with my economic hat on, which I said I've stepped, I've kept away from this. Simon Jackson, who's the economic growth manager at Fenland. I know he's had uh, conversations with uh, the owner of Force One, and because of the training aspect that is coming on site, it was proposed. Um, Simon's trying to get some funding from the CPCA to try and help fund this. So we've got Fenland pulling in one direction to bring businesses back, and we've got the planning pushing it away. Uh, it's not a reflection on planning, I can see, and we'll see where the policies lie. But, you know, looking at this, you know, we, we should be doing everything we can to support this business. It's grown in the last few years, and I think this business will go from strength to strength, especially when it gets on its new site. Um, I mean, looking at uh, item, item, a reason for three for refusal, uh, it's in flood zone three. But the, the next agenda on the item on the agenda today 
is South Ends at Chatteris, and that's in Flood Zone 3. And we've had before, we've passed things in Whiz Beach in Flood Zone 3, and we need to be consistent in this. Mitigation measures will be made to make the site safe. It won't be unsafe in any way. Um, and we are running out of space in all the market towns for where do we develop and where do we grow? And we will be holding a business back, a good business that employs local people, that supports local, local businesses from the, the wages they earn. And I, I can see no reason whatsoever to, to uh, refuse this here today. Yeah, thank you. I've got, I think I've got to steer where this is going, but I'll bring in Councillor Purser. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah, I was really going to echo uh, more or less what sort of Councillor French and Councillor Benny said, really. Um, yeah, I had a look at it, and I think really taking consideration, it's not hurting anybody in any way as far as pollution is concerned. It's well out of the, out, out in the, uh, out of the sticks, as they say, really, and sort of on the rural side of it. Um, so it's actually helping local people take the pollution out of it. Um, the only, yeah, the only thing that was actually said down there was the fact that it has no footpath or street lights. With, uh, I think with the development like this, it doesn't actually need footpaths because everybody be driving down there. And I don't think we, have to, we actually have to sort of like put street lights down there so that doesn't come into it either as far as I'm concerned. And giving extra employment down there, I think it's only got positives for it. And I, I actually support this application. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Purser. Councillor Sutton. <coughs> thank you, Chairman. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can understand why officers um, are recommended refusal on sustainability in terms of footpaths and street lighting, etc. Uh, I fully understand that and, and fully respect that. <coughs> um, but you know, we we pretend to be open for business, and it's no just put, no good just putting on a, a bit of paper saying we're open for business. We've got to show that, that is exactly what we are. Um, the middle level commission has been a bit said about the middle level commissioners, but the, the, in principle, the middle level hasn't got any objections to it. It is just a finite detail that they um, have got to get sorted out. And, and that, of course, if that isn't sorted out, as was stated earlier by both Alice and, and Nick, if that isn't sorted out, then whatever we do today, um, they won't be able to carry on with it. So they need to engage fairly sharpish um, so they can get us off the ground in the event that, that we go against offers recommendation. In terms of sustainability and position, um, from the site entrance or the proposed site entrance to the fountain in March, which I think most people agree is the centre of March, is 1.4 miles from the fountain to Long Hill, right outside Force One's gateway, is 1.9 miles. So I appreciate from the fountain to Long Hill, there is a pavement all the way along there, and there isn't, except for going over the railway crossings, there is no pavement there. So just that small section. Uh, the old railway that is not not the not the station road <coughs> the station level um and i accept that there isn't a pavement down there but in all honesty if there was a pavement down there how many people would be using it you know there's been a fortune spent putting a pavement from Meeple to ely or Sutton to ely <laughs> and I, i'm not a regular user of that road but i've never seen anybody on it yet so I absolutely respect the reasons for the recommendation. Um, I don't agree with them all, but I, I think we, we as a, a committee need to be showing that we are open for business as we pretend to be. Um, and I will certainly be voting in, uh, in favor of the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. So we're still in debate. Oh, Councillor Marks, thank you. I'd like to add to this. I think, yeah, keeping the lorries out of Long Hill is certainly having driven lorry and driven an Arctic into Long Hill. These guys have got a lot of heavy truck movements and it's also intertwined with the prison and the traffic there. And also they're having to reverse in and out of the site they have taking this, taking the lorries back into this new development would certainly make sense along also with the training centre 
all businesses are struggling at the present time trying to get labor and especially qualified labor so they're actually pre prepared to put their money and investment into this which can only benefit the local area yeah very pertinent points councillor marks so we're still in debate anybody would like to add to that councillor sutton once again thank you yeah i just just um just want to add that um this this application was sent around to us some time ago and, and it's one that's sort of like been in the back of my mind for a long time because as joe will confirm um i had awful problems opening up some of the um documents in that in that uh, in that file uh, we did get it sorted out in the end joe didn't we and, and, and i recommended joe um go into the tech department in the uh, it because um it was through her efforts we got it sorted out so it's been in the back of my mind but i mean i i you know perhaps shamefully i had no idea who force one was or, or even that they was here or to the extent that they work you know they work uh, nationwide in, in in so many various different industries you know um i think we should be proud that they're here and we should be proud that they they want to stay here and exactly. and to to risk losing them to another area um if we turn this down i think it's fairly high so uh, on that basis, I think we 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 must we must approve it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Sutton. So we're still in debate, Councillor French. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I like Councillor Sutton had no idea the size. I mean, to be honest, I've never seen any of their vehicles. I'm surprised and I live on the A141, so I'm surprised I've never seen them. Um, <clears throat> I think you know we have come through the worst uh, pandemic in living history. And I think it's absolutely great to see a business thriving the way they are and actually um, <clears throat> looking forward to expand. And I will say that the residents of Station Road and Elm Road will be absolutely delighted to get them out of Long Hill. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Councillor French. Anybody else got anything new to add to the debate? I think we've all had it. A say haven't we and thank you very much for a very good debate so i'm bringing the uh, debate to a close now so would you have any officers any points or any clarification clarifications you'd like to make to the committee before i ask for a proposal okay, Chairman. you of course you may yeah um so if um members were so minded to go against officer recommendation just to remind you um the need to uh, express reasons why you're putting your proposal forward uh, and that those should address the reasons for refusal identified in your report and those relate to uh, very briefly um, the rural location the uh, unsustainable location um, in terms of uh, transport connections the flood risk sequential test and the tree mitigation thank you chairman yeah thank you nick so with that I'm now going to invite a member to make a proposal on the application. So just a minute. Councillor Sutton. Yeah, I'd like to propose we go against officer recommendation and approve this uh, uh, application, Chairman. OK, thank you for that, Councillor Sutton. We've got a proposal for Councillor Sutton, seconded by Councillor French. Um, now we need some reasons, please. Councillor uh, Sutton, would you like to yes, kick them I'll off? Yes, I'll do that, uh, Chairman, and I'm quite happy, happily do it um item one it, it refers to being a rural outside a rural area outside the town of march um and would introduce substantial buildings and other building work on agricultural land um i don't feel and, and i guess you know many other members won't feel that that is necessarily the case um the urbanization is already there in in many respects and and, and regardless of whether middle level was built as a an exception site which it may well have done, and, and I, I guess if Alison said it was, it was. Um, but the fact of the matter is it's still there. Whether it's an exception or not, it's still there. So, you know, I, I don't go along with that. <clears throat> um, I accept that the paving issue does make it unsustainable in, in certain respects, but, but I think that the overbearing um, the overbearing reason to move it there uh, outweighs that. <clears throat> uh, application in flood zone three, um, so, so long as it has a, 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 a proper uh, flood risk assessment done and, and you know 
goes along with that and that can be conditioned. I have no problem with that. You know, we're, built, we're building in this flood zone three everywhere. Um, you know, and, and the sooner we get out of this, can't build in flood zone three unless you're in Whiz Beach, the better in my view. Um, and then four, um, again, the, the horse chestnut tree, um, that can be covered by condition and must be covered by condition. Um, that, that, that is protected um, throughout the, the development and, and in perpetuity. So uh, that would be my, uh, my reasons, Chairman, if they were uh, accepted and um, we'll crack on. I, I totally agree with what you said, but um, I would like to point out um, it is a public footpath here. Uh, I believe it's Route 66, the uh, County Council public footpath. Um, that must be protected at all. That actually goes, um, I can't remember where it starts, it starts up north somewhere, and it actually goes through to, to Peterborough. Um, I do know many years ago, I think it was MDM, I'm not sure, actually diverted that footpath. So we don't want, obviously, to lose the footpath. Um, so, yeah, I totally agree with what Council um, said. When, Chairman, when we're talking about footpaths, we're talking about public right away. Public right away. Um, Sorry, not yeah, footpaths. That's what, that's what uh, Councillor French means. So, it all up in a nutshell, then we've got this application to go against officer recommendation to approve this application. It's proposed by Councillor Sutton, seconded in Council Red. If anybody agrees that, please put the hand up now. So we go is, to could I just clarify, is that to the delegate? Especially with middle label. Yeah, I'm more than happy if you want to see the conditions, Council Sutton. Um, I'm happy with that. So. We'll, we'll now, with, that, with those conditions, then obviously what Councillor Sutton said and Councillor French um, uh, elaborated on, probably. So now we'll go to the vote then. All those in favour of that application, please put the hand up. That looks to me that's unanimous. Joe? That's unanimous. That's unanimous. That application has been approved. Thank you very much. That's an excellent. We'll now hand over to Alison once again to present agenda item number six, F stroke YR21 stroke 1504. It's an FDC application. So, Alison, when you're ready, please. Thank you. This application is for the erection of two blocks of industrial units, six units in total, in a class E brackets G, close brackets, workshop and offices with associated parking and enlargement of existing attenuation basin. The location is on the South Fens Enterprise Park, Fenton Way, Chatteris, and the applicant is Fenland District Council. The agent for the scheme is Mr. Jamie Burton of Swan Edwards Architecture, and the recommendation is one of grant. The application is before planning committee as Fenland District Council is the applicant. There are no updates to report. The site is located immediately north of the A142 and accessed from Fenton Way, which is situated to the west of the site. The complex comprises the main South Fens Business Centre, which runs parallel to the A142, and eight business units, which are situated along the northern boundary of the site. As can be seen on the location plan and aerial photograph, there are commercial uses to the west and north of the site and across the A142 to the south. The wastewater treatment work sits to the northeast of the site. The Google Earth image currently on display shows the site in close-up view, with the green abundant areas to the east and the south of the site being the intended locations of the new buildings, which are the subject of this application. The purple footprint, which doesn't appear very purple on the overall overhead, unfortunately. Um, the building to the bottom edge of the site adjacent to the A142 comprises two workshop units, each with a floor space of circa 460 square metres. The footprint that runs horizontally north to south is comprises four smaller workspaces, each of around 280 square metres. 
The elevations and floor plans for the two buildings are currently displayed on the overhead. The units are to be finished in grey composite cladding and as highlighted in the officer report, they are keeping with the wider industrial estate setting. The image on the top left, top left of the screen shows the view from inside the site looking out eastward. The image to the top right of the screen is from a similar vantage point that captures the frontage of the workspace units to the north of the site. In essence, the new buildings will be sited immediately to the rear of the image captured and to the right hand side of the image in the position of the green bund immediately to the rear of the parked car in that top image. The image on the bottom right of the screen includes the western corner of the rear range of workspaces and includes the commercial building to the north of the site. The bottom right image shows the South Fens Business Centre and its associated car park. The following photos show to the top left, the eastern boundary of the site and the existing bund, which will be the site of the new four bay range of workspace units. The eastern end of the property immediately to the north is also captured on the left hand side of this image. The top right hand image is a similar viewpoint, but captures the wastewater treatment works in the distance. The bottom left image is the view from the wastewater treatment works looking west onto the site and the neighbouring commercial site. The bottom right image is a close-up view looking from outside the site in a westerly direction. The final photo is a further close-up view looking from the lane which serves the wastewater treatment works with the existing eastern bund shown on that image. The proposed industrial buildings will be situated within an existing and established business complex. Although a flood zone three location, there is clear justification within the agenda report to support the development and satisfy both the sequential and exceptions test as guided by the planning practice guidance, which um, promotes a pragmatic approach when looking at existing business sites within Flood Zone 3. Okay, um, just do your very best to repair it. Thank you. Yeah. Do we need to do something else? But do we need to do something different? No. Should I just put the other switch in? Oh, no, the other switch is right now. Is there something in there to do? It's not working. So I think it's going to be a switch for coming to the station. Okay. So just check the zoom. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question, please? Why why do we actually have to um record this now? We didn't record it before um COVID. Yeah, that's one thing I think we need to look into now. So after this meeting, I'll ask uh, officers the way forward with uh, and see if we need to do this anymore. But uh, so, are we ready to go again? Yeah, would you? So, I'm going to invite you, Alison, to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. 
I think I've covered the issue of the flood zone three location. So um, the Cambridgeshire County Council Minerals and Waste Team have highlighted the need to demonstrate that the development will not prejudice the existing or future use of the Chatteris Night Layer Fen water recycling area or result in unacceptable amenity issues or adverse impact to human health for occupiers or, or users of the area. However, officers consider that any impacts arising would not be any different from those experienced by current users and note that there have been no complaints emanating from existing occupiers of the site. Furthermore, it's acknowledged that the scheme represents an extension to an existing operational site, albeit the buildings will be a few, meter close, few meters closer to the wastewater treatment plant. Noting that there have been no complaints arising from the coexistence of the two uses, the scheme and the clear benefits of delivering additional commercial accommodation of an appropriate scale and design within this established site, the officer recommendation is one of grant as per the recommendation and conditions detailed on pages 47 to 51 of the agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank you once again, Alison. We have no speakers on this application, so I'd now like to invite members to put questions, clarifications to officers. If you'd like to ask a question, please can you raise your hand? So questions to officers. Councillor Sutton, thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> I just um, note in the report that the MWPA advised us to go to Angling Water to get a view about the closeness of the development to the works. Was that done? And if if it wasn't done, why wasn't it done? Um, Anglin Water comment, no comment, because there's no connection to any Rather strange. Would you like to come back on that, Kent? No, no, that's you're that's happy fine. with that. Just want, I just wanted to make sure that we had well, made comp. I think I might have misled you there, Councillor Sutton. Erish the thought, yes, but at least I've, I've pulled it back. I oh, know that would be accidental if that happened, yeah, totally. So, it would appear that the yeah. Yep. Through, through you, uh, Chairman, if I may, um, this issue cropped up with um, a pre-application proposal uh, that I was engaged with, um, and I did, in respect of that particular proposal, um, get in contact with Anglian Water, uh, and I never got a reply um, from them. And it's on that basis that we haven't specifically gone to contact Anglian Water over this particular application. And the approach that we've taken as set out in the report is simply to look to see whether or not our colleagues in environmental health have had any odour complaints in respect of the treatment works. Uh, and there was no evidence of that, Chairman, hence our recommendation. Given that we manage those buildings, um, not only would we receive complaints as a, an organisation that has a responsibility for environmental health, we would have had complaints in respect of our sort of landlord responsibilities. We've had neither. Thank you, Chairman. Most certainly you would. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I'd just like to come back on that. Yeah, I, the, the, the reason my question was that um, I would just want to make sure that it doesn't look as though, and I, I know it wouldn't happen with professional officers, but it may look as though um, the planning authority hasn't looked at the application in as much depth as it would have done if it had been a, a, another applicant. And I just wanted to clarify that position that you know at least it has been um, it, it has been dealt with e either by pre-app or, or, or post-app. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Councillor French. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, the previous application, we had uh, <clears throat> lots of detail from the middle level, um, which was West Fens Drainage Board. Um, nightly, there's nothing much from them. Is there a particular reason? Uh, through you, Chairman, you know, we can't control whether or not uh, a consultee um, responds to our consultation or not. Our 
strategy consult T it is for this type of application, or should I say this scale of application is going to be the lead local flood authority. They pull rank over um, the IDBs when it comes to um, surface water management. Um, but having said that, and at risk of sounding like I'm contradicting myself, is at the end of the day, if there is going to be a discharge into an IDB facility, then a separate consent is required, as we heard on the previous application, Chair. Uh, thanks for that. It's just the fact that they're both in flood zone three, and you know, there's obviously a lot from middle level West Fen, but nothing from night layers. But, okay, and I, I know they're not statutory. Uh, Councillor Sutton, well, you'd like to come back? I'd just, just like to clarify some, some issues and comments about the middle level and, and the associated boards. Most of the reason that the middle level don't comment on lots of the application is because they just don't have the resources to do so. But at the board and commissions meeting last week, uh, it was agreed that there would be uh, extra funding found for an extra full-time officer. So hopefully that will improve going forward. Extremely good news, Council Sutton, you're bringing us this afternoon. So, still we're in questions to officers if anybody would like to ask one. No? no thank you for that. So, right. Um, thank you, everyone. I'd like, now like to invite members to debate the item in respect of the material planning considerations uh, before us. So, if you want to speak, please raise your hand. We'll, we'll try Councillor French and uh, Councillor Cornwall thank next. You. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. It, it's great to actually see. Um, you know, the climate we're in today, it's great to see um, that businesses are thriving and that Fenland um, mm -hmm. have got the insight to actually put this application in, hoping um, uh, that, you know, when we finally get out of the financial mess we're in at the moment, that more businesses will um, actually rent the premises down there. So I fully support this application. Thank you, Councillor French. Councillor Cornwall, please. Yes, Chairman, I didn't ask officers this before because I don't actually think it's necessarily, um, shall I say, a planning question. But presumably, um, the authority is planning ahead, as Councillor oh. French has said, uh, and there is a demand for this anyway. So if that is so, then surely we start using the same arguments as we used in the previous application. And in actual fact, um, you know, we should be supporting local businesses and so on, um, which presumably is what we're doing here by by providing those facilities. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's no argument. You know, we we approve it and work start, starts as soon as we can because I believe I was told that there is already waiting demand for the, uh, this sort of place. Is that right? I think I think um, right and so anyway. So, so as I'm concerned, yeah. Cornwall, there is certainly a shortage in Finland. You're absolutely correct. Mr. Cameron, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I absolutely support this application. I think it's brilliant to see these embryo units being constructed. Uh, to bring smaller businesses that then move on to larger premises, which then allow other people to move in. And so I absolutely 100% support this application. Thank you, Councillor Scanlon. Still in debate, anybody would like to add to that? If not, I'll close the debate. Well, I can't see, so I think I've got to steer where this is going again. So officers, would you like to, uh, any points of clarification at all? Thank you're, ha you're happy. So now I'd like to invite members to make a proposal on the application. Please do so by raising your hand. Councillor Miss Scanlon. I vote we approve this application. And we'll go to Councillor Cornwall this time, just as a... So Councillor Miss Scanlon. Cornwall. So now we've got... But that's a unanimous decision again, so the application has been approved. Thank you. I'll now hand over again to Alison Hoffman to present application item number seven, F stroke YR22 stroke 0185F. 
Um, when you're ready, Alison, please, thank you. Is it? We can't. Oh, yes. I don't know what you want to do. Okay. Let's get there. But then we're not sharing screen sharing anything, are we? We need to get the top. Okay, Alison, start when you're ready. Sorry for the delay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Agenda item number seven, reference F stroke YR22 stroke 0185 stroke F. This is the erection of a first floor and single story front extension, single story rear extension, and a two story rear, extent, rear extension to existing dwelling at three Irving Burgess Post Whittlesey. The applicant is Mrs. C. Beager, and the agent is Mr. Matthew Taylor of Taylor Planning and Building. The application is before Planning Committee as it's been referred by the Head of Planning on advice of the Committee Chair. There is one update to report which has been circulated to all councillors. The update acknowledges that a further letter of support has been submitted from a resident in Irving Burgess Close and also notes the submission of an updated site plan to show the location of two dwellings recently approved to the east of number three, with accompanying commentary from the agent indicating that these dwellings add a more varied mix within the street scene. Officers note that the approval grant note the approval granted. However, they consider that the visual appearance of these dwellings is in keeping with the locality in terms of their scale and that they are not to the detriment of the street scene. The evaluation of the proposals for three Irving Burgess Coast remains sufficiently robust and the recent approval has no consequence to the acceptability or otherwise of the scheme now proposed. The application is shown edged red on the sites currently displayed. It is noted that the existing property is situated to the eastern end of the Spur Road off Irving Burgess Coast and the committee members will see that the area currently approved for development as referenced in the circulated update is to the east of this site and currently contains outbuildings associated with number six, Irving Burgess Place. The current slide display shows the existing and proposed site plan with the extensions clearly shown to the right hand of the screen, these being the three orange blocks, two to the front and one to the side and the white block to the rear of the grey shaded main dwelling. The larger block to the front is a first floor extension. The smaller block to the side of this is a single story porch and the side extension is a two story addition with the white section immediately behind the dwelling comprising a single story. These are the existing elevations of, and floor pans of three Irving Burgess posts. This slide just indicates the dwellings approved to the east of the application site as referenced in the update report. As you can see, they're a traditional property 
design um, commensurate with others within the locality and of an appropriate scale. So the site layout is shown on the lower image to the right hand side. So there will be plot four immediately adjacent to the side boundary with number three and plot five um, along the boundary with number six. This slide details the proposed elevations and footprint of the extended dwelling proposed for number three. Well, three Irving Burgess Close. It is contended that the front first floor extension is unsympathetic to the host property and forms an incongruous feature in the street scene. In addition, the two story side extension is considered fragmented in design terms and will also have impact on existing residential occupiers in terms of visual dominance as detailed within the officer report. The photographs currently on display show the existing dwelling and views outward from its garden, the tree being in the northeastern corner of the site, with the lower image to the right hand side of the screen being taken from the footpath to the west of 125, illustrating the relationship of the single story dwelling, one Irving Burgess Close, with number three to the east, number three being the buff coloured dwelling to the rear of the existing brick gable in that lower image. So you can see the single story bungalow in the red brick adjacent to the wall, and immediately to the side of that, you can see the three upper windows of number three, Irvin Burgess Post. The application site is situated on the eastern side of Irvin Burgess Post, a residential cul-de-sac within the market town of Whittlesea. The application proposes the construction of a first floor and single story front extensions, single story rear extensions, and a two story rear extension which is also visible from the side. The application site is surrounded by residential dwellings to the north, east and west, and single storey dwellings are situated to the north and northwest of the dwelling on site. The first floor and two storey element of the scheme are considered to overwhelm the existing dwelling on site and do not appear subservient, resulting in an incongruous development being introduced within the street scene. The two storey element of the scheme would appear visually dominant and this would be to the significant detriment of surrounding residential occupiers. The recommendation is therefore to refuse the application as per page 60 of the agenda. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, thanks once again, Alison. Um, we have no, again, no speakers on this application, so I'd now like to invite members to put questions to officers. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand. So question to officers and it's Mr. Cornwall uh, to start the ball rolling. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, with the, the front extension being dealt with as it is, is there any change in the parking arrangements there? Well, I noticed it was heavily overparked, including something parked on double yellow lines, I suppose. Um, the existing garage is maintained at ground floor level. So, um, so it's the same, it's yeah. The yeah, but obviously the, the level of accommodation provided changes, so whether that would place further demands, but I think um, the officer hasn't highlighted any particular issues with parking, it is. Right, so any issue. increase in the building doesn't increase the amount of parking to be required, that's required. The existing property, the existing property is already four bedrooms, so it would take it into the requirement for three parking spaces. Even an increase over and above that four bedrooms would still only require three spaces. Because that's how our parking standards are, are constructed. So, there so be there's no, the no um, right under our rules. There's no increase in parking needed. Yeah, yeah. and it also we a bit we friendly, have, doesn't it? Yeah, we okay. have to be mindful that it's a town centre site as well, or a well located site. Councillor Sutton. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Well, a lot of what I was going to ask has been covered, <clears throat> but I will go back to that. Um, on page seventy-eight. I think I know the answer, but um, yeah, 78. In the, if I can get back to it, in the area where it's got the three orange um, extension paths, to the rear, it says FF only. Well, that can't be right, can it? 
no, that is a, an error in the drafting of, of that. It is certainly a two story extension. Build it on the stilt cells. But I was going to return to, I was going to go, well, I will return to the parking issue. Um, I always thought an extra bedroom wouldn't be an extra. I know it. Do, if you go from four to, to four from three, it increases by parking by one. So are you saying that it doesn't increase if you go five, it increases by one? No, it's the parking standards are in two, two tiers. So once you're four, right. it's three. Because then... actually there's barely enough parking there for the thing as it is now. When, when I went down there, there was a, a white BMW, which was parked in front of the left-hand garage. And there wasn't room for that to be parked there. It hung well over the pavement. And certainly to the right of the side, there's no way you'd get a, a standard car in there. So I did think maybe with the cul-de-sac as it is, yeah, it wouldn't make much difference. But with the two new dwellings, we've now got the door in here, you know, for that car to be parking over the pavement, yeah, I, I think there is a parking, a parking issue. I don't understand. I, I tried to find the old application for, for number three um, to see see how and why it was built that because there's plenty of room at the back that could and should have been moved back to 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 you know to to allow that parking on the front but it is as it is and we are where we are as we say Alison um, but I, I I got serious concerns about the parking um, and to be fair I, I think officers have got this one right I I think there's there's too many issues to to, to to warrant anything other than going with officer recommendation on this one. Um, there's, there's overlooking and and I, I I have to say with respect to the two local Whitsey Town councillors here, I, I have to say that I am a little bit confused as to their recommendations because on this particular application they recommend approval. But on the previous one that was withdrawn, which was almost identical, there was slight differences in there. Um, they recommended refusal, and, and I'll read it to you. The town council recommended refusal as this does, ma does not match the street scene, and it is also out of character with other properties. We consider there are, no, are overlooking issues with neighbouring properties, and we feel the opaque glass is not acceptable. That was on 210224, which was withdrawn. Um, and I'd say that Wilson Town Council got it right there, and they, for some reason, changed their mind on this current application. So, for me, I will be going with office recommendation. Okay. Any more? Not any more. So, Park is terrible. No. Good yeah, so Sutton, have you finished? I am. I, I just, Anybody else? Yes, so. Oh, he's finished. Yes, okay. So, anybody, so any more, so any more questions or anything? So, we're going to now, anybody else want to continue the debate? No? Are you going to, anybody else going to say anything? Councillor Sutton's mentioned that. No? Okay, so nobody wants to add to Council Sutton's views in the debate. Council French, I thought you'd, I thought you'd say something. You just need enticing, don't you? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I actually agree with um, Councillor Sutton, and this is getting quite dangerous agreeing with him. Um, but the, the the parking, um, the, the the parking. I mean, obviously, I'm heavily involved with this civil parking enforcement, and I can just see a nightmare happening down there. Uh, it's a shame because it's a nice little corner. I thought the house opposite looked absolutely great. It's a very large, uh, very large house. Um, but um, I think this one would come back and bite us. Yeah, go on. I'll add in as well because there is obviously a, a problem down there. And frankly, the rules are going to change and they're going to change quite severely. And it looks as though those vehicles were not 
in fact, be able to park in front of the garages while they uh, look at things because the plot is of in, uh, insufficient size anyway. Um, and as soon as they get on the um, on the footpath, they're going to be breaking the uh, the uh, the new law that's coming in. And I'm sure that our our <laughs> enforcement team will deal with it accordingly, won't they? So, yeah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, yes, I um, yeah, I will go uh, against the refusal. I, I will support a refusal. Now I'd like to invite members to make a proposal on the application. If you'd like to do so, please raise your hands. Councillor Sutton. I'd like to recommend we go with officer's recommendation on this one, Chairman. Okay, so Councillor Sutton. Have we got a second for Councillor Sutton? Councillor <coughs> Warnwall. So we've got a proposal on the table to go with officers to refuse this application. Uh, Proposed by Councillor Sutton, seconded by Councillor Cornwall. Uh, please put the vote on that uh, proposal, please. Those against? That, that application has been refused. With that, move, with that, with that we'll move very quickly on, I think. Um, so, Alice. So, are we are we ready to go? Yeah. No. Right, so now we're back on, on back on song again. I'll now hand over to Alison again to present application F stroke YR 220241 F agenda item number eight. So when you're ready, Alison, please. Thank you, Chairman. This application is alterations to shop front, including bricking up a window and a replacement window frame at five Park Street Chatteris. The applicant is Mr. Jabber. And the agent is Mr. R. Papworth of Morton and Hall Consulting Limited. The application is before planning committee, given the number of representations received contrary to officer recommendation, and also notes that the property is owned by a district councillor. The site is on the northern side of Park Street, opposite the junction with East Park Street and within the Chatteris Conservation Area. It's also within the setting of several grade two listed buildings. The existing and proposed site plans are currently displayed on the screen. These are the existing elevations and floor plans um, pre the unfortunate incident um, that occurred with regard to the ram raid. The original shop front as detailed on the slide featured a traditional stall riser, divided window panes and a doorway to the site. The property being a 19th century building. The proposed elevations and floor layout are now on display. It details a new aluminium frame shop front with an almost full height glazing and central sliding door. The slide currently on display shows the scheme which was previously refused with the planning inspector upholding the decision made at appeal. In considering the appeal, the planning inspector found that the scheme would not preserve the character and appearance of Chatteris conservation area and would be harmful to the setting of listed buildings in the vicinity. The planning inspector considered the presence of more modern shop fronts, but found that these were not comparable to the scheme 
which was considered. The image on display shows the site photo taken from Google Street View. The application site is located on the northern side of Park Street, opposite the junction with East Park Street within the market town of Chatteris. The site is situated within Chatteris Conservation Area and is within the setting of several Grade 2 listed buildings. The building on site is a 19th century building with an original shop front in situ. The Grade 2 listed buildings within the immediate vicinity of the site, 7 Park Street and numbers 2 to 8 Park Street, all date from the same era. This application is for the alterations to the shop front, which include bricking up a window and a replacement window frame. The scheme submitted is similar in its impacts and considerations to the previous scheme, which was refused by the council and dismissed at appeal. The proposal is considered to introduce harm to the character of the conservation area and nearby listed buildings, given the modernization of the existing historic shop front. The scheme submitted is not a design that displays unity with buildings of which it is part, nor does it incorporate the traditional elements of shopfront design. It is therefore considered that the scheme would be unsympathetic to the appearance of the existing buildings and characteristics of the area. The recommendation therefore must be one of refusal as outlined on page 72 of the agenda. Thank you. Yeah, thank you once again, Alison. We have three speakers on this application. First, I'd like to invite Councillor Haggerter from Chatteris Town Council to make his presentation to committee. When you're nicely settled, you have five minutes, uh, Councillor Haggerter. Thank you. Thank you, Chair and Fender Initial Councillors, for enabling me to time to speak on the following planning application FYR2202. 41F. The application is regarding the replacement and redesigned shop front, which suffered extensive and serious damage externally to the complete shop front and the interior of the business. This was caused by a ram raid and a robbery to the business, which also interrupted and resulted in a loss of trade to occur during the time it was able to be secured. The business trades as a NISA local supermarket and serves as a very important part of the population of the Chatteris community, being in a prominent location in Chatteris. I'm here today to speak on behalf of Chatteris Town Council as chair of the Chatteris Town Council Planning Committee. The application, when put before the Chatteris Town Council Planning Committee, received unanimous support for it to go ahead. We are therefore extremely disappointed and indeed surprised but a recommendation to reject our decision on a conservation issue. We, as a responsible planning committee and town council, understand the need for the conservation of eligible buildings to be considered, but we also understand the need for the retail business to progress and move forward with modern, up-to-date retail requirements, such as the need for a modern shop fronts which attract and enable easy access for all parts of society and to enable business to remain in viable and fair competition with its competitors, in which it is very difficult time for the future of our high streets and local businesses. Conservation issue appears to be the location of the business on the corner of the intersection of Park Street, Market Hill, East Park Street, and within this location and immediately opposite is Barclays Bank building, a listed building, now undergoing conversion to Chatteris Museum, which when as a bank had alterations to the internal entrance door with up-to-date stainless steel and glass entrance doors fitted, no doubt for security and ease of access on show when the bank was open, along with a cash point machine with stainless steel surround on view day and night to meet today's trading conditions, which would not have been there when the building was built. Along Market Street, within a few yards walking, the ex Lloyd Bank building has a modern frontage. In the High Street, the post office has a modern frontage. With the Baker's Stroke Cafe a short way along, also with a modern frontage. Further up the High Street, a completely new shop front to the Pizza Restaurant has been fitted. In East Park Street, a new shop front 
of similar design has had planning permission granted and fitted to a convenience shop, retailing in similar products. This falls within sight of the NISA local store in question. We do not see anything out of character with this application and believe it will improve the appearance of the location with these alterations and understand requirement for such alterations in today's 2022 competitive trading environment conditions, especially after two years of lockdown disruptions for business. Even St Peter and St Paul's Ancient Church has, been, has seen the need for a new glass internal entrance doors to be fitted for the comfort and convenience of today's progressive conditions. I mentioned previously the requirement for business to cater for all sections of society, and these alterations will enable a much easier access for disabled and wheelchair customers to experience. It should be a given in today's society along with supermarket fronted improved and being much more able to remain a competitive, competitive and viable business enhances the area in our opinion. I also understand there's a great deal of local support for this improvement. Chatteris Town Council therefore once again unanimously supports the application. You have 30 seconds. And ask Benland District Councillors for their constant uh, consideration to grant the application. I should like to thank you for your attention, time and consideration of this application. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Councillor Haggerty, for that. Uh, members, questions, clarifications to Councillor Haggerty, raise your hand, please, if you have any, of course. No, I can't see anything. Thank you very much. Could, could someone fetch Councillor Benny, because he's next on the, uh, the list. Charlie, thank you. Right, so now um, I now like to invite Mr Ian Benny, who is speaking as a member of the public in support of this application, to make his presentation to the committee. You have five minutes as well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Have my presentation put up on the screen, please. Yeah. Gonna have the next slide, Alison, please. Right. Um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak, as always, to members and uh, officers. Um, this is the front of the shop, as you can see. This is where the ram raid took place, where the vehicle went through the front. Um, we're going to have to do some structural work. My structural engineer informs me we have to put what they call goalposts, which is a steel frame to hold the front of the building up and that goes back in. So that'll be part of the application. To the right, you can see the big window that is also mentioned in the application that we will change to an aluminium front or an aluminium window that will match the sliding doors if we get those. And the third window along to the right is the one that we propose to brick up. I'll put up the next slide, please. On this slide, uh, you can see the this is between the alleyway between number five and seven Park Street. In the report, it says this is an 18th century building, but um, actually in 1911, the front of the building was taken down. And you can see the difference in brick at the back is the old part, which is the 1800 brickwork. And in the front, there's probably a Cambridge white or similar brick or Warboys brick. But behind the chimney, it's actually got common bricks in. So there's a good mix of brick in there. And this isn't part of the 18th century building as was. If I could have the next slide, please. On the next slide, just to give a, a sort of an idea of what the street scene looks like in Chatteris, this is one of the grade two listed buildings, which is next door, that's number seven Park Street. And if we could have the next slide, please, Alison. And the third slide, this actually isn't in the conservation area, but it is in the street scene. Uh, we've got TP24 and we've got the Empress building, which is something like a shipping container with wood on it. So the um, area isn't quite uh, the, the pristine, full of historic buildings that uh, may be implied. I forgot the next slide, please. Um, moving on to Winnie Road, this was an application. This, this shop is actually 188 metres away from where the, the, the application you're looking at today is. Now, this was passed last year under delegated authority, and this shop had a door in the centre, 
and has mine bricks at the brick at the bottom on either side with a sort of standard fairly standard victorian window the owner of that shop did the work on there without planning permission and had to do a retrospective application and that was passed back over the next slide please with this application as i said it was 188 meters away from uh, the application you're looking at today this also lied within the conservation area and the conservation officer's comments with that with a loss of timber frame shop front and brick below and replacement with full glazing is regrettable, but the overall impact is neutral. So I offer no objection to this. By interest, there were nine letters of support, the same as with my application here. It also went on and talking about the national design guide, um, understand and relate well to the site, it's local and wider context. It's well designed, high quality and attractive, socially inclusive, well managed and maintained. And what this gentleman's put into his shop is exactly the same as I would like to put into this one. On the other side of the shop, further down the street, we have Bridge Street, a bridge house. This was also passed last year, also in a conservation area. And this also had a central door with brick below and a typical Victorian shop front. And this one was passed under delegated authority as well last year. That, as with the two applications, or my application and the uh, two using as examples, both were in Chatteris Conservation Area. All three applications had full support from the Town Council. And on this one, the Conservation Officer recommended approval with the comments, the principle of altering the fabric of an existing building within the settlement of Chatteris is considered to be acceptable. In this instance, it is felt that the sleek and modern alternative, which retains the scale of the opening, does not alter the overall character of the building. Again, we are looking to change with a modern shop front into this. So what are we trying to achieve? And the best way I can do this is to use the Nisa store in Whistlesea. Now I've known Janie and Anish Kashwara for many, many years. And what they've done with their shop is what I'd like to do with this one. Um, as you can see, it, it'll be the same color aluminium shop front because it's rail number 7024, which is a Nisa color. You have 30 seconds. Thank you very much. And um, so really, I, I can only say that uh, what Jamie and Anish have done, uh, this gives a very good rip, visual impression of what we want to do with the shop in Chatteris. This was also, the one in Wilsey was also within a conservation area where the, com the conservation officer's uh, conclusion was the proposal is considered acceptable and represents no adverse harm in terms of uh, principle of development and historic environment. That's your five minutes, Mr. Thank Benny. You. There we are. And I'll leave you with a picture of what we are trying to achieve in Chatteris with your support. Thank you, members. Thank you, Mr. Benny. I'd now like to invite members to put questions or clarifications to Mr. Benny. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand. So, Councillor French. Uh, thank you. Mr. Benny, what benefits will, uh, will this bring to the local area? Um, sorry, I have two questions. So that's the first one. Okay, well, the first one will do. Um, in terms of benefit, when I was at the shop, I was there 35 years and I applied in 2006 to change to very similar to what the proposal we put in front of you. And that was refused back in 2006. Um, and we were forever getting people complaining. It's difficult to get a wheelchair through the door. Smaller ones fit okay, but the bigger ones and old people, a lot of local people use the store. Um, and a lot of old people have shopping trolleys who had mothers with buggies. And it is a fight to get through the door. Even with the door held open, it's it's hard to get through. It's not a, a, a user-friendly um, doorway. When I put the, the previous application in, in 2006, I contacted the Papworth Trust, which works for disabled and disability to improve DDA. And I haven't got the report. They actually did a report on the shop. I paid for that, which was submitted with my application. Um, and they said what we were doing at that time by putting the sliding electric doors was making you know the shop far more accessible and Chatteris has a lot of mobility scooters as our mothers pushing their buggies and that would improve the um, accessibility to the store so in terms of community benefit this would most certainly bring um, make the shore the, the shop more DDA compliant um, and uh, it, that will enhance the shopping experience within the town. Um, also, there is um, a perception with shops. Uh, Tesco's and all supermarkets have 
uh, built this, this, this image up, they set the standard for where or what customers expect from a, from a shop and from a supermarket. Um, and part of that expectation is how you, what your doorway is. Tesco's would never build a store with a wooden door on it that's only wide enough to get a buggy through or a, you know, pedestrian access. And that is the standard and expectations of shoppers these days. And by changing this, that will meet um, shoppers and customers' expectations of what um, people expect as a, as a customer in any business. Um, well, I shouldn't ask the question. Are there many empty shops uh, in Chatsworth? Obviously, all, all towns are suffering to uh, pandemic and internet buying um, purchase. Um, what is Chatsworth like? I know what March is like. Um, from memory, because I was preparing this application, I went out with my camera early Sunday morning and took a lot of pictures of the town. And I was actually quite surprised how many empty buildings there are and empty shops there are in Chatteris at the moment. So in case I got asked that question, I, I did a little bit of research and there are 54 or 74 shops, 54, I think 54 shops that are in use, um, either as restaurants, shops, offices, uh, but there are 17 empty shops in Chatteris. Now that is a, is a high number. And as businesses are struggling, and we all talk about COVID recovery here at the council, um, that is a reflection of the, of the damage that COVID has done to the retail environment throughout the whole country, not just in Chatteris. Um, and after actually doing the, the maths on that, I think that maybe I ought to be looking to see what I can do to try and help bring some of those businesses back and all those premises back into use. Thank you, Councillor French. Anybody got? Oh, yeah, Councillor Mark, sorry. A couple of questions. Firstly, will it improve security at all? Obviously, by putting the metal fronted as opposed to what you've had bricks in the past. Um, will it improve it? We are going to put, take more uh, measures. We're going to put some steel posts inside the shop to stop the ram raid. Um, but like the gentleman who runs the shop, he said to me when I, I put the uh, wooden frontage back up, the temporary frontage, he said it's not very safe. And I said to him last night, we had a nine inch brick wall with a steel roller shutter and a solid mahogany shop front and that didn't stop them how safe you want it to be. Um, it is only as safe as, as determined as somebody is to get in. Thank you. And second, secondly, is, is there many listed buildings around it? Uh, there are listed buildings um, around mine. There is the one that I showed you in the example. There is the Barclays Bank building that is a, a listed building. Um, that's the one that the town council, Chatteris Town Council, is taking on to turn, or well, we're going to convert that into the museum. Um, but going back to the application on Wenny Road, um, that has three uh, listed buildings uh, within 20 metres of it, and there was no mention of that in the in the previous uh, application. That Wenny Road is number one Wenny Road, and numbers two, four, and four A are also listed buildings within 20 metres of that. Uh, any more questions for Mr. Benny, please, before we let him go? No, can't see any. Thank you very much, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Matthew Hall. Of course, he's the agent to make this presentation in committee. You also have five minutes, Mr. Hall. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of what I was going to say has already been covered by the previous two speakers. This site, as Alison said, was subject to a planning application appeal in 2006 stroke 2007 that was refused. Um, however, since that time, the 2014 local plan has come in. Um, I submitted two photos, I think, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the first one there is immediately adjacent to the conservation area. That's Apple Green at Huntington Road. As you can see, that's got modern shop front yes it's a modern building but that's immediately adjacent to the conservation area the next one here which also mr benny said about is right okay fair enough take fair the enough. microphone with you mr hall i will do yes very much oh you don't put um, it in your pocket when you go thank you <laughs> Um, so the next one's Bridge House that we can see that's in the conservation area and was approved to have that modern shop front i'll call it it's a cafe in 2021 in the officer's report it states that the proposal would not impact the scale of the shop front 
it is a sleek modern alternative and will not impact on the historic fabric, which need all this application. The proposal does not impact the scale of the building and uses the existing structural shop front opening and provides a modern alternative. This proposal will allow a wider access into the main facade of the building, not a restricted single pedestrian door. It will allow better access for persons with poor mobility and the door will be self-opening rather than persons requiring assistance as we've heard already. Examples are given along with the previous examples rather in the conservation area in Chatteris or adjacent to it. The other example is the one that Mr. Benny said about at Wenny Road, which was approved last year for a modern shop front, which is exactly what we're trying to achieve here. With, with the ram raid on the 6th of January, the historic fabric by the door and the timber was lost due to the ram raid. There are other shop fronts in and adjacent to Chatteris conservation area, and we've provided examples of these and the majority of the consultees support this application. A lot of what I was gonna say has already been said, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Hall for that. Now, members, questions, clarifications to Mr. Hall, if you've got any, you know what to do. Councillor Sutton. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> um, there's been, been quite a lot made about the ram raid <clears throat> and the results of it, but, but there's nothing to stop that original frontage being replicated. Is there? Or, or, or... So at the moment, there was temporary propping providers, as you've seen. The structural opening of the building is there. So could we put back a timber shop front, glazing, timber pedestrian door? You could replicate that again, yes. Any questions, members, for Mr. Hall before we let him go? Can't see any. No, nope, thank you very much for that. Members, questions for officers? Councillor Scolding, thank you. Yes, I'm just wondering why some of the shops were allowed to have the new fronts and was passed, and this one's not. Alison. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Obviously, each application has to be considered on its own individual merits, and also you have to look at the, the position um, and the fabric of the building. The advice that we are given, which obviously was endorsed by the planning inspectorate back in 2006, is that a modern shop front in this location, in this design with no traditional features is unacceptable and does nothing to preserve and enhance the character of the conservation area. As I said, officers would consider the shop front proposed in context giving due regard to the building and make their assessment based on that. This is clearly what we've done on this occasion. And obviously we need to look as well at the planning history of the site, which clearly supports the findings of officers back in 2006 in making the assessment and the similarities of the current scheme as such that it would be inappropriate for, inappropriate for us to make any different recommendation with regard to this scheme. Thank you. And obviously, specialist conservation input has been given. Thank you, Alison. Would you like to come in next, please? Yeah, if I may, Chairman, thank you. <laughs> to, to add to what Alison has said, context is everything. So you can't just look at the building um, in a picture and go, the change is good or it's bad. You have to look at the qualities of that building, indeed, absolutely but you have to look at the context that surrounds it. So, yeah, what are the qualities of the buildings um, it, within um, eye shot of the proposal? What is the context um, telling you and informing you about the, um, the heritage asset? Now, when one of the examples that was shown on the screen was at Broad Street Whittlesea, you had a picture which showed a modern shop front um, and it was sort of standing 
uh, proud of a, uh, a heritage, a, a building of, of history. You know, you saw a, a date stone uh, above and, and to the rear of the modern shop front. And on face value, you might go, oh, crikey. But then if you went to Google Street and saw what that building looked like, prior to those works, you'll see that the works that had been applied for and approved in that instance was an actual improvement over what was there before. So you need to look at that context. Um, just to stress, um, you know, the appeal decision, yes, it, it is quite a, an old one, um, but it's still uh, incredibly sort of pertinent to um, the, the situation that we're looking at today you saw from the photographs of the, the building prior to to the damage it's a relatively simple um, design and it wouldn't take too much in terms of revisions to the submitted scheme to get something that would keep ourselves as planning officers and conservation officers sort of happy um, so you know the stall riser could be increased in its depth and instead of having a, a, a sheet of glass on that window, you could have some, um, some division in that to give it a more traditional appearance. And in terms of the door uh, into the premises, yes, that could be made wider than it was previously, and you could fit an automatic door opener to it. So the, all the problems are perfectly resolvable in our view and wouldn't be um, excessively demanding in our view um, on the applicant. And I'll finish chairman by highlighting to you um, what the, the national um, planning policy says when it comes to um, heritage assets. So it says development proposals um, should be such that they sustain and enhance the significance of the heritage asset that they make a positive contribution um, to the heritage context and that that heritage um, can bring uh, benefits and make sustainable communities more viable. And thirdly, that um, it's very desirable for new development uh, to make a positive contribution to the local character and distinctiveness um, of um, the particular location. So you've got an existing shop front, although it's been subsequently damaged, that had uh, a nod towards some traditional shop front features. And the proposal that we've got before us is looking to strip that away and, and, and not have a nod to it at all, really. Um, and therefore, I can't see how we can sit here and say that it makes a positive, yeah, the proposals before us make a positive contribution to local character and distinctiveness. It seems to me that it's stripping that away. Mm. The, the final thing I'll say, Chairman, um, is that um, Chatteris Conservation Area in the most recent edition, the 2021 edition of the uh, Heritage at Risk um, study, uh, identifies Chatteris um, Conservation Area as being very bad. Um, but improving. And I think that um, by refusing this application and pushing for um, a better quality design, um, I think that we can say we're honestly hand on heart playing our part in continuing with that improvement in the quality of the conservation area. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Now, thank you for summing that up, Nick. Um, Councillor Miss Camlin. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, looking at the uh, site planning history, you're quite right. There's uh, an appeal in 2007. The world has changed a lot in 2000. Can you tell me how many of the premises within the conservation area have been altered between 2007 and 2022? Because it would appear that a lot of them now have modern fronts um, and modern uh, attributes that weren't in existence in 2007, and probably quite rightly so, the uh, appeal did refuse it in 2007. The world has changed considerably in those passing years, and 
I actually think this is, does enhance the uh, premises from what, what, what it was, because there's also damaged the, through the ram raid to the first floor. So there's got to be a structural uh, redesigning of the front of the premises to make it secure for obviously the people who live over the top or storeroom that's over the top um, with a steel frame to make it secure. So I actually think this enhances it uh, for the public in general. Yeah, please, Nick, please come in. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. The, um, the works that are required to make the building safe can be undertaken through building regulations and wouldn't need planning approval. It's not a listed building. Um, because all of those changes would be essentially uh, internal and not external facing. So I don't think that's a, an issue. Um, as you've heard today, and as you've stated, uh, since 2007, there's been many a, a, an application which has resulted in changes of use and uh, new shop fronts. The vast majority of those shop fronts um, have been uh, traditional in their design uh, and have been approved. And I, I would say that um, it is only a, a, a relatively modest number of uh, shop front changes have been sort of modern in their appearance but as we've heard today through the officer responses that you've heard um, the decisions about whether to approve those has taken into account the uh, original building its um, its uh, design aesthetics the quality of the um, conservation area and the buildings that surround those application sites. So we're not blindly saying um, in all instances, yes, it's got to be a traditional shop front. You know, that's not the way that we operate. What we do is we look at the development proposal, we look at the um, building itself, and we look at the context around it in order to come to a recommendation and a decision on applications. Thank you, Chairman. Uh have you got any, no, that's quite a um, comment you made there, and it, with respect, um, the shop, the takeover. Sorry, Chairman. Still with absolutely. That'd be fine, Alison. Please. My members might look to like to look at that because that, uh, to me, probably is the difference. This is this is a question to officers. Most definitely. I'm not I'm making any comments. I'm just letting not letting members look at uh, what the. So yeah, that's so, a listed building, Nick, isn't it? Yeah. So what you have to do is you have to cut through. I'm probably being a little bit unkind when I say this. You've got to cut through the um, potentially gaudy colour scheme that there is the content of the signage uh, above the shop window because we don't have any control from a planning perspective over that content. <laughs> Equally, we have no con control over um, the stickers in the window. So you've got, to, if you strip that away, what you've got is a traditional stall riser. You've got the fenestration going on where you've got the, the window um, divided up into segments. You've got the setback um, doorway as well, uh, and the doorway of the appropriate width. And you've got the get me shop front terminology palisters. dusted off the pilasters um, either side of the shop. So it's got all of the elements that we're looking for there. It's just that we can't do anything about the stickers and the color scheme. Mm. <sighs> Not totally convinced over that, but. We, there is an explanation there. So we're still in questions to officers. Thank you, Nick, for that. 
Well, <coughs> answer it and I can soon, I can ask it and I can soon put you right, if not. Looking at all of this, I'm questioning whether if there had been no ram raid, would we have been looking at it? Would they have actually put in a planning application <coughs> to do what they're trying to do if there hadn't been the ram raid and they needed to do something to make the building safe, etc. Yeah. I think but, I think that's perhaps that's not I a know, question, but, officers. You're absolutely right what you say, but probably that's the thing you may want to bring up in debate because it's not a question. Officers can't answer that and probably none of us are in here no, can either, None of can us they? can answer the question. Sorry? But none of us can answer the question. No. But if you looked at the original photograph, and I understood what Nick just said about that mm. other building, you can see the old, shall I say, old-fashioned way that the window was mm. done. And could this not be done more sympathetically with what was originally there? Yeah, so uh, I appreciate we're not in debate. Uh, no, uh, we're and we're not in debate at all. We're still, we're still, the, uh, we're still, uh, it's still in questions. And to answer the, the, the question that was put to me, yeah. um, uh, I think the answer is, is yes. Right. Uh, and to reiterate uh, something I said before is the revisions to the scheme to make it acceptable are relatively modest in my eye. As I mentioned, it's a case of increasing the height of the stall riser getting some um, separation into the uh, fenestration, uh, a, a wider door with a, a, an automatic door opener, and I think we'd be pretty much there, Chairman. Yeah, well, I'm still not convinced, but anyway, still, still questions to officers before I bring it into debate. No, can't see any more. Right, that's it then. So I'm going to open this up for debate. Who'd like to kick it off, please? Oh, sorry, Councillor Sutton. Oh, yes, Councillor Sutton, then please do. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I visited all my sites yesterday. <coughs> and um, deliberately went into the shop because I read about the DDA uh, issue. And, and actually, as it turns out, when I came back and read it, I, I, I'd read it slightly wrong because I was under the impression there was a either a step up into the shop or a step down into the shop. But as it happens, I got there and, and it is in terms of level, the DDA compliant. Um, but whilst I was there, I, I had quite a little weight in the shop to to be fair, because they got something wrong with the tiller, I can't remember what it was now, but there was about four, four of us waiting in the queue. And whilst I was there waiting in the queue, uh, a dear little lady tried to get in the shop with her, um, oh, yeah, oh, whatever oh, they're oh, called, like, I'll call them like a mini wheelbarrow, but, and, and the, <laughs> bless her heart, she couldn't, get, she couldn't get in. So the shop assistant had to go and open the door and, and see her in and that. So whilst we've got, um, you know, refusals, and we've got inspectors um, confirming those refusals and, and various things. But in those days, we didn't have LP2 and health and wellbeing. So for me, I've probably got a different opinion now going on site and, and actually seeing that with my own eyes and experiencing that, I've probably got a bit different uh, opinion now than one may well have had previously. Because I absolutely 100% agree with the conservation officer and um, the, you know, case officers that this scheme does nothing at all to enhance that area. Nothing, in my view. But on the flip side of that, it doesn't really do anything to make any demonstrable harm in my view. So for me, that part of it is neutral. And I guess other people have different, well, you know, officers do have a different opinion to that. But for me, that part of it is neutral. So the thing that's sort of like, I've been thinking in, uh, you know, in the back of my head about this dear little lady I saw, the electronic doors is certainly going to be a benefit 
to the health and well-being of a section and probably an important section of the community. It make no difference to me because I walked in the shop, I opened the door and walked in, but, but that dear little lady, she couldn't, she couldn't get in. So for me, the benefits to the community outweigh the objection to perhaps, we had this discussion, didn't we, on, on the London Road um, uh, horse shed or whatever it's called. It, it perhaps isn't perfect, but for me, it's close enough to go against Opera's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, some pertinent uh, answers there. Councillor Sutton, I have to say, Councillor Murphy, then Councillor Purser. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Well, I, I think in refusing this, uh, it could be a detrimental in two ways, a detrimental step in two ways. The owners of this business could just say enough's enough and pack up after all what we've done and leave it and it comes derelict. Denying the, the hundreds of customers, and number two rather, is, is denying the hundreds of customers who use the shop daily. This is one, one of, or probably, the busiest shop in town. And this would put another nail in the coffin for Jackers if refused. What we have to do is, is blend new with the old. So both can live together and in other, as they do in other larger towns and cities. This is in a row of shops that will inevitably be uh, altered over a period of years to keep up with the modern times. In my opinion, old and modern will enhance each other and become a norm. It will be, it will be fit for purpose, which when it is altered, which is not now. It fulfills LP 16, such as D, F, I, J, K, and O. It fulfills LP 17, such as A, B, and F. And I'm just going to throw another thing in here. It's nothing to do with this at the moment, but just throw in a, the possibility that in the future, it's a future scenario, that E in LP 17 with roller shutters. I believe that unfortunately, in this day and age, vulnerable shops like this will be all eventually have to have shutters for their own security and insurance. NPF 197 says this application has to have regards to scale and, and no, any harm or loss, which it does. The Chattis Town Council support this application and so do I. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Murphy, for that indicative reply. Thank you for that, Councillor Purser, and Councillor Scolding. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I've done a great deal of bit of thinking about this. I, I actually realised that one of the things that actually been said about it is it's in a conservation area and great two listed building. Um, taking on board what Councillor Sutton said as well about um, you know can we not replace um, a light front for a light front? I think he actually answered his own question when he said he visited the place. An old lady there with the, 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 the buggy there couldn't get through the doors. Now, I used to, I still own quite a few shop units myself, but when I actually had my own shop unit, one of the biggest, I used the word complaints, was when people used to come up to the door with the wheelchairs and all the lights and complain they couldn't get in because the shops were too narrow. Now, what's actually happened here is, as it's been said so many times before, unfortunately, the place has been ram raided. And I think it's actually an ideal opportunity to replace it with um, better facilities for those. Now, in this day and age, retail itself is a very, very tough business to be in, a very tough business to be in. And I think we should be encouraging all local people to use those facilities like this. I think we should be encouraging all kinds of business and the opportunity to actually use local amenities like this. And I actually feel that by enhancing that front, which takes nothing away from the actual building itself. You still got the structure itself and say Councillor Benny wouldn't, or Mr. Benny in this case, he wouldn't actually put in, um, look into this without doing his homework on the structural side of it. And um, I think to do this with the better doors and things, we'll actually encourage more people to use it. And I think this application should be very, very encouraged. And I think which I, I fully support it, fully support it. Thank you, Councillor Purser. Councillor Scolding. Yes. Um... 
more or less said what I was going to say, but I also do support this scheme. And I think it's going to be better for the wheelchair users, like you said. And it's a way, if we said no, you'd be discriminating against the wheelchair users. And also the prams. The children used to be, when years ago, used to be left outside the shop. But they can't do that now. They want to bring the children into the shop for the prams. I think this is a nice way of doing it. Electric door straight in. They're not struggling. Thank you. Thank you, um, Chairman. We sat around this table at various meetings, almost having fisticuffs with Chatteris members over conservation um, in, in, in many of the applications. Um, um, the more I think about this, the more I think that the recommendation uh, is incorrect. I, I, in fact, going back to that previous inspector's decision, I don't think he took into account anything about disability discrimination. Probably because it was a very new act. In fact, we've been looking at, at dates and so on okay. over here on our phones, which we can do nowadays. And I don't think he actually took that, or the inspector, he or she took that into account. Um, in relation to the building itself, I mean, if we're talking about the application of, that, of those acts, to medieval castles, you know damn well that there has to be an exception and, and you can't apply it. We are talking here of a 1911 shop front, which I believe uh, Mr. Benny told us that, that, that the whole front was changed in 1911, presumably he's got proof of that. So we're not going back vast distances. And I think here we've got to a stage where yes, the shop front is old, but it's old, which does not aid the sustainability of the use of the building at all. Um, the building is obviously used by quite a few people who, in fact, are covered by um, the, the Disability Discrimination Act in various ways. It's a town centre property, probably very attractive to people who can't get out of town easily to go to the out of town stores that there are there now. And unless we can help the business maintain some sustainability, then um, you know, I think all we're gonna do is work to the disadvantage of the town and the people who live there. So I think on balance myself, that the proposal probably, whilst not being 100% uh, suitable, has to be balanced off against its use and, uh, and purpose. And I think under those circumstances, given that many of the other uh, buildings and so on in, in church are serving very similar uses, um, have in fact been allowed to modernize uh, their fronts. Um, for their customers and under those circumstances I think I would have to uh, agree with some of the other speakers and say that I think we should actually approve the application. Yeah thank you very much Councillor Cornwall, um, very good debate but Councillor French would like to, oh Councillor Marks first thing Councillor French, whichever whoever wants to do it. Councillor French go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> thank you, um, yeah I basically agree with everything what um, everybody said, <laughs> apart from, uh, sorry, officers. Um, it, it was, Alex did highlight that it was um, a long time ago, it was 16 years ago, and a lot of things have moved on since then. Um, I'm, I'm sure you have taken into consideration the Disability Act, which was brought, brought in in 1995 and repealed in 2010. So there's a new act in there. Um, which as I would think if you actually read the whole act, um, which I haven't the time to do so, um, this would um, comply with it. I, I would support this application. Uh, it's not a listed building. Um, no disrespect to Chatteris and Chatteris people. It's not a very pretty building. 
in actual fact, it's a bit of an eyesore. I did actually look at another Nissan um, um, place, and I actually think it's quite a nice design. Um, so I, I will be supporting this as well. Yeah, thank you, Councillor French. Now, Councillor Marks, if you'd like to add to it, thank you. I think the only thing I would talk put into this as well is 188 metres away, we've got another shop front, is exactly what these people are wanting to do. So we, we're told continuity is what we should be doing. And then we're saying in the next breath, sorry, you can't do what we've already given planning further up the road. Yeah, short, concise answer, Councillor Marks. Question anyway. So we're still a debate, guys. Good debate's been had. Anybody else? No, no, right. So I'll close the debate now. I'm sure you would, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just to reiterate the significance of the previous refusal and the inspector's decision, notwithstanding um, its age, it is um, still significantly uh, relevant to your decision today. Um, whilst not a planning consideration, uh, one would presume that uh, the property was insured and that the reinstatement of the shop front would be covered by the um, insurance company. And in that context, I don't think you can be making a decision here today uh, on the basis of, oh, if they don't get this, they're going, you know, the, the shop owner is going to walk away from the site to, and, in, and the business is under threat, et cetera. I don't think that that's, that's relevant. The second, sorry, the third thing I'd mention is that um, a like for like shop front replacement wouldn't actually require any planning consents and could go ahead without any interference or involvement um, of ourselves as a district council. So that's something to, to bear in mind. And then the final point uh, I'd like to make is in relation to um, what I'll call the solution to the problem. So as planners, we're not saying, and the conservation officer isn't saying, we'll only ever accept like for like. What we are looking for is a bit more of a nod towards a, a more traditional shop front design. And as I've said before, it, it, in its most simple terms, um, yes, we'd be quite happy with a wider door that could have an automatic door opener, which would resolve the, the, the concerns that members have expressed with regard to uh, access by a variety um, of sections of the community and um, a, a, a better design in terms of store riser and the subdivision of the shop front window. So those things aren't particularly taxing to do, expensive to do or, or, or challenging to do. So I don't think from the officer perspective, you know, our recommendation is uh, unreasonable, Chairman. Thank you. Thanks for summing that up, Nick. Right, so members, um, now I'm going to invite members to make a proposal on the application. If you'd like to do so, raise your hand. So, Councillor Sutton, please. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> yes, I'm going to propose we go against officer's recommendation um, and approve the application. Yeah. Material planning reasons, Councillor Sutton, thank you. I, I, I think L, LP2 uh, does play a part, although it's not mentioned anywhere in the in the report, I don't think, unless I've missed it. Um, it does play a significant part, on, in my view. Um, and, and, and that benefit to the community outweighs anything that's, uh, I mean, Nick quite rightly says it, it, it the, the current scheme probably could be enhanced to um a point where it was recommended for approval but i think that will probably only be a minor thing um in terms of cost but in terms of time and getting the place done um would, would take quite a long time so i i think that the benefits to the community outweigh any form of unsympathetic um appearance that might be had so that's that would be my reasons yeah yeah okay so with that so we've got a proposal from council and i'm quite happy with that because i absolutely agree what you're saying um so 
So we've got a proposal from Council Sutton to go against the officer's recommendation, uh, seconded by Council Scolding. All those in favour of that proposal, please raise your hands. Chairman, is that is that good? With that in mind, uh, we'll now go to the vote, if that's okay. So those in favour of that application, please raise the hands. Those against? Those abstaining? One. So with that in mind, the application has been approved. Thank you. So that concludes today's planning meeting at 15.26. But before you...